Okay, today we are doing our first day that I would call the unit circle, or another way to say it is circle trig. All right, so it really is about sine and cosine and how you could find, instead of just finding sine and cosine for things that were like 30s and 60s and 45s, we're finding them on a circle. So let's just make sure you really understand. Uh, this one, you're used to these numbers being one, two, and the square root of three. But what if you wanted the hypotenuse to be one? Well, isn't that half as big as you kind of wanted it to be? I mean, this is what you're used to, the red numbers. So if the hypotenuse had to be one, well, you divide everything by two. Do you get that two divided by two would give you the one that you wanted? And then this side would have to be a half, which makes sense because this and this are like supposed to be twice as big as each other, right? And then this would be root three over two. I just took my normal dimensions, the red ones, and divided them all by two. This one works out really nice because you already memorized it uh, as, oh, wait a minute, this does not work out nice. You memorized it as 1, 1, and root 2, right? And so how is this different? Well, they want it to have a 1 on the hypotenuse. Do you get you could divide everything by the square root of 2? And now that 45, 45, 90 triangle has just turned into, instead of the 1, 1, root 2, 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, and 1. Why do they want the hypotenuse to be 1? Because we're going to be doing circle trig. And when we do that to make the unit circle, the radius of the circle has to be 1. And this is always going to be the radius of the circle. All right. So when it's 60 degrees, then it's just a 30, 60, 90, kind of like the other way, right? And this used to be 1, this used to be 2, and this used to be square root of 3. And so now to make it be a 1 there, I'm going to divide everything by 2, divide everything by 2, divide everything by 2. And that's pretty much the same as this first triangle. It's just that its orientation is turned so that the pointy end is up on the top. Now that we've got all of these done, the actual questions become super easy. What is the sine of this angle? I'm going, I'm here now. Let's see where I'm circling. The sine of the angle. Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Oh, that's kind of cool. The hypotenuse is one. So when you do opposite over hypotenuse, do you get it's just the opposite side? I mean, I can put one half over one, but why would I put over one when it's just one half? Ah, what is the cosine? It's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is root three over two over one, which is root three over two. You see why we converted these all over? Because now all of a sudden the sine and the cosine of them are super easy. Now tangent wouldn't be super easy in that case. It'd be one half over root 3 over 2, but notice they conveniently left off tangent because, you know, that's the dark side to changing all the numbers. Now, tangent doesn't work out nice. But since the, the hypotenuse on this thing is 1, then sine is 1 over root 2. Cosine is, well, it's the same thing. Now, one more, and this is important. Pay attention to this. I hope you get, you can, if you want to, do what's called rationalize and multiply by root 2 over root 2. Some of you are already good at this, and you just automatically know that that's the same as root 2, and on the top it's root, or on the bottom it's root 4, which would be 2. So this is actually exactly the same as root 2 over 2. So don't freak out if you don't see 1 over root 2, and instead you see this in your answer choices, root 2 over 2. Okay, that's called rationalizing the denominator. All right, last but not least, the sine of this one, 
the key angle here is the 60. So sine is 60, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and again, our hypotenuse is 1. So cool, it's just root 3 over 2. And our cosine was, cosine of 60 is 1 half. Okay. So why did we do all of that? To get you ready for this, the unit circle. Now, I hope by now you've already got this part down. Pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, etc. And I'm not going to go rewrite them all down. Okay, you should know how to bounce those around and go 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. 6 pi over 6 is the same thing as pi, etc. But what you need to also be able to see is how this circle, if it's a unit circle, has a radius of 1. Now I'm going to step over here because I think this will help you. Watch this. I told you you're going to make so many of these you're going to want to puke by the end. You make a circle and an xy axis on the inside of it. And my gun kind of got squished in there, so I'm going to try making my circle better. Okay, now pay attention to this part. I'm going to make these three different colors so it makes it really obvious. I'll make this one black because it's on the black side. And I'll make this one. Uh, red. And if this is my angle, and here's my question. Would you agree that this is the x distance and this is the y distance? Okay. Then what is sine of theta? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, Mr. Server. Well, the opposite is y, and the hypotenuse is 1. Remember me saying we're always going to make the hypotenuse 1? Why? Because it's the radius of a circle. Okay, so sine of this angle is y. That is a huge moment right there. Sine is the y value. This distance right here is the sine of that angle. The x distance right here, I bet you'll figure out what it comes up to be. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent would be x over hypotenuse is 1. I could put x over 1, but why just divided by 1 doesn't do anything. Cosine is the x value. Okay, so if sine is the y value, and cosine is the x value, then that leaves tangent to be what? Toa, opposite over adjacent, y over x. That we're going to refer back to over and over and over. So write it down if you haven't already. Sine is the y, cosine is the x, and tangent is the y over the x. All right, now I'm going to go back over here. And if I said that this line right here is going to pi over 6, would you agree that it makes a 30, 60, 90 triangle? So that means this is 30 degrees. And if sine is opposite over hypotenuse, I can temporarily do, oh yeah, 1, 2, square root of 3. But if I'm really in the unit circle, what do I have to divide everything by so that my radius can actually be 1? Think about that. Okay, Birchild, what am I going to divide every all those three sides by? Are you going to divide it by the 2? You are correct. That way I'll have a radius of 1. Because 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now it has a radius of 1. 
Nice. Now, I can say that this spot right here, pi over 6, I'm now going to make it into a point. A point? What are you talking about, server? That point is over root 3 over 2 and up 1 half. Process that for a second. It went to the right, root 3 over 2, and up 1 half. So this dot right here, this dot is at root 3 over 2, comma, half. Put your virtual hand up if you feel like you understand that. Put your virtual hand up if you get that that point is at root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. It's just like how far over and how far up to go. The radius is 1. If you have any questions, now would be the time. You can put your virtual hands back down again so I can see if there's actually any questions. This is super important because if you don't get where the first one came from, it's going to be hard to understand where the second one comes from, etc. Okay. Then I'm going to just show you the mirror effect. If I go over here, the, wouldn't this also be 30 degree angle right here? And then if I wanted to, I could make this right triangle again. And I think some of you are going to see what's coming here. I'm going to make a point. And that point is going to be how far over, which is this direction. I'll make it blue. That's how far over I'm going. I bet it's the same as the other one. Except it's in the negative direction. Because, you know, when you start at 0, 0 and you go to the left, that's negative. Negative root 3 over 2. And then how far up is it? It's got to be the same as the other one, so it's got to be 1 half. And so what point is this? Negative root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Those are the same exact numbers as we had before. It's just that one of them is negative. And it didn't used to be negative. But now, because we went to the left, it's negative. Where do you think I'm going to go next? Down there. Because, are you seeing how this kind of bops around? And it just follows the straight lines? And all of a sudden, this spot has got to be root 3 over 2 comma one half again except is it negative yeah because they're both negative because i went to the left and i went down so they're both negative negative and negative and then the same thing over here that triangle negative one half Root 3 over 2 is actually already in there. I shouldn't draw it again. I'm going to make it smaller because it was a little bit large before. And now this point must be hmm. Positive root 3 over 2 to the right, and then when I was down, that's negative, so negative 1 half. Cool. That is the unit circle. Unit means 1. Radius of this circle is 1. And it tells you, when you've got a completed one, it tells you the sine and the cosine and the tangent of every single common angle. See, in the past, you had if I asked you to figure out sine of 30, you could only do it in a right triangle. So you couldn't possibly do the sine of 120. 
but now you can. You probably know your calculator could do this all along, but you couldn't until now. All right. So let's zero in on this again and make sure you got how this happened. This was our x distance. This was our y distance. So therefore, this point is at x comma y. But then we figured out because sine is opposite over hypotenuse, this was the sine of the angle. This was the cosine of the angle. And therefore, it's cosine comma sine. This spot would be the cosine of the angle comma the sine of the angle. It was x comma y, but x is cosine, and the y is sine. Okay. So next, let's just do a problem where you get to see, like, how the heck are you supposed to do sine of 120? All right, that could be made into two 60s. 60s are pi over 3, so this would be 2 pi over 3 or 120 right there. One twenty is also known as two pi over three. So what's the sine of one twenty? All right, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. I'm going to make three different color lines again. Green on green is terrible. I'm aborting on that, making this dark black, and then I got red and I got blue. Okay. So now this is 60 degrees because this is 30 degrees. And how do I know that's 30 degrees? Because I know this was 90 degrees and I know that the total was 120. With me on all those? So now if I ask what is the sine of 120? You should say to yourself, okay, I'm going to draw a right triangle, but you can't draw a right triangle that has a 120 degree angle in it, but you draw this triangle. First thing you do is you draw that blue side right here because you'd have known that that's where 120 was. And then you have to make it into a right triangle. So you always stop on the circle and then drop down to the x-axis. Yes. I know there's another way you could draw that right triangle and that way is wrong. You have to draw it this way. Okay, and now, do you remember those lengths of those sides? Well, I don't think you should just memorize them. I really don't. I think you should go, okay, I know these one, two, square root of three. And then, if you need to, because the problem was really focusing on the unit circle, you could divide everything by two because that would make my hypotenuse into one. But I don't actually have to do that, just so you know. Some people get all twisted about this, that they have to make the hypotenuse be one. Nope, because watch, the sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. This 60 becomes what's called the reference angle. The reference angle is 60 degrees. So sine of 120, I have now drawn the triangle and I'm gonna say something you're gonna hear over and over for this unit. Why? Because it's super helpful. If you've got the triangle drawn with all the right angles and all the right sides, now it's just super easy from here. It really is. 
you need to understand what the most common mistake in circle trig is, though, and that's forgetting about a negative. Is there somewhere on my drawing where there should be a negative? Seriously, there's so many little things we're going to refer to from now until it's June and you are out of here and you're done for the year. This little thing you're going to hear over and over again. The most common mistake in circle trig, it's about negatives. And I think Gassert sees where there should be a, be a negative. Uh, negative one. Yeah. Why? Because we went to the left from zero, zero. And why is that going to make a difference in my answer? Because sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. In this case, if it was just sine, it, it doesn't matter. Because I'm only going to use the opposite and the hypotenuse. And it's root 3 over 2. Now imagine for a moment there's some other kid who's like, but, but, but you told us we had to divide by 2 on everything. Do you get, if you divide both of them by 2, the answer's still going to simplify down to root 3 over 2? It's like doubling both of them and saying, 2 root 3 over 4, and then it simplifies to root 3 over 2 again. So if you really, really wanted to, you could divide this by 2, divide this by 2, and divide this by 2. And what would be good about that? Because then the sign would be the y of it. And look at that. The y of it is the same thing that we just got. It's root 3 over 2. Or you could say root 3 over 2 divided by 1. Okay, that was really, really important. Mr. Server? Yes, go ahead. How does the 60 act as sine 120? Because instead of the 120, we went, do you remember how we went around and we drew this blue line from the 120? That's what the, where the 120 degree angle is. And instead of the 120, we use the 60 as sort of like a surrogate. It's like a reference. It's not the angle, but it's an angle that will work. So <laughs> I can't tell you that 60 is 120 because it's clearly not. But I can tell you if you draw the line where 120 would be, there's only one logical way to make your right triangle. And once you've made your right triangle, the 60 can act in the place of the 120. It's kind of like, believe it or not, you can actually have a stand-in at your wedding. Let's say that you were at, you were in the armed forces and you wanted to get married uh, to your girlfriend and you proposed to her and you're still in Afghanistan and she's here in the United States. You can have somebody stand in at the wedding for you and act in your place. Okay, and then you're over in Afghanistan, you're having the wedding, somebody else is standing there getting married to your wife, but they're doing it for you. It's kind of like that, this 60 degree angle, this 60 degree angle, we know it's not the 120, but it's a stand in for it and it will still work. And if you want to, if you feel like, no, this is wrong, this is not the right answer, well, check it and try sign of 120 and you get the decimal, it'll be root three over two. The calculator knows how to do this. Okay, so let's do another one like that. Super critical part here. You gotta put it all together. So when I ask you, it, last time it was 120, this time it's gonna be 150, and I'd like you to find the sine of 150, which is the same exact thing as the sine of a whole bunch of pi over threes. Let me think. 3 pi over 3? No, no, no. A whole bunch of pi over 6s. It would be 5 pi over 6. Same exact question. How do you get the answer? You draw a 150 degree angle, which is not 180. It's a little less. How much less? Well, it's 30 less. Then 30 becomes in our stand-in angle. It's standing in like in church, getting married for you. And there's my three sides. Maybe yellow will work.
And if you want the sine of 150, you can do the sine of 30, but in this quadrant. Once you've got it, I'd like you to follow up with what's the cosine of 150? Okay. This is why I told you you had to memorize the right triangles of 30, 60, 90, because this is going to come up over and over and over. Okay, so 30, 60, 90, we're talking 30, 60, 90. And then it's 1, 2, and the square root of 3. What's the most common mistake in circle trig? Somebody pipe up and say it. Uh, negatives. Yep. So this is negative root 3. Don't forget that. You're going to forget it at some point, and it's going to cost you 5% on your test, at least. But sometimes when you forget the negative, it screws up other things. All right. So now, do I have to make it so the radius is 1? No, I told you you don't really have to because it's actually simpler to not make it be 1. What do you mean? I thought you said it's a unit circle. It depends. If you need it to be a unit circle, then you need to divide everything by 2. If you just need the answer to what's the sine of 150, it's the same as the sine of 30 over here in this quadrant, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse, it's going to be 1 over 2. It's just way simpler than having to divide them all by 2, and then you're going to get two weird numbers. I'll do it just to show you. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. And then if I want the sign, it's the y value, which would be 1 half. And look at that. It still works. But it's an extra step. Why do it? It's extra. 5 pi over 6 is the same exact question, just with, it's like saying, I have 3 feet. Oh, I have a yard. Same thing. Okay, what's cosine of 150 then? Henry Remick. Cosine of 150 is negative 3 square root. Root 3, you say. Root 3 over 2. Yep. Now, you could have done that by taking adjacent over hypotenuse. Or, since we divided everything by 2, you can just look. Cosines are the x values. So you could have just looked right here and got that answer there, too. Either way it would work. Now you are freed up to be able to find sine, cosine, and even tangent of any angle without having to make right triangles that have ludicrous angles in them. Now, the ones that are tricky and weird are the ones that are at these spots, like pi over 2, also known as 90 degrees. So what's the sine of 90? Going to try to draw a triangle for that? Uh, you can't. So then you say to yourself, we are on the unit circle after all, which means that that radius, which happens to be right here right now, is at 0, 1, and sine is the y value. So if I want sine of 90, I'm really saying, what's the y value there? It's 1. What's the sine of 90? It's 1. What's the cosine of 90? Cosine's the x. It's 0. Okay, where the heck did you get the 0, comma 1, Mr. Server? It's because it's on the edge of the circle, and it's got a radius of 1, and so you know it's got to be 0, comma 1. How about this spot down here? Well, that would be 0, comma, negative 1. So I ask you, this goes with this, what would be the sine of 3 pi over 2, also known as the sine of 270? I hope I have you saying this in your sleep by now. The sine is y. If the sine is y, it's negative 1. Cosine's x, cosine would be 0. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 would be 0.
And that's the same exact thing as the cosine of 270. What's tangent? Well, that's y over x. It'd be negative 1 over 0. So tangent of 270 does not exist. If you don't believe me, put it in your calculator. It won't give you an answer. Okay, that was a lot. And here is the unit circle in all its glory. All filled out. If you memorize this, I will admit you have an advantage over everybody else because it's all the common angles and we pretty much always use the common angles. Not every, every time, but almost every time we use these angles. So if I asked you, what's the sine of two thirds pi? You go, here's two thirds, sine is y, boom, root three over two. You get how fast that is? I would have had to draw this triangle and know that two pi over three is like 120, so this is 60, and then this is a 30, and this is a 90, and a one, two, square root of three, that's a negative, and then I'd say uh, sine is opposite over hypotenuse is root 3 over 2. It would have taken me about eight steps. If somebody had memorized it, boom, they'd know it was root 3 over 2. So this, for a visual person, there are some people who have a massive advantage in life. And they are people that have a photographic memory. If you are that person snap a photo of this and you have like half the answers for our tests for the next month. Could you just brute force memorize it? Yep. Do you have to? Nope. Because you can always draw the triangles for them. Let's say it was this one here. Which is 5 pi over 4. Then I go, okay, so this is a 45 degree angle. 1, 1, square root of 2. Oh, you got to remember, negative, negative. And then, let's say I want a tangent of it. Toa, opposite over adjacent. Negative 1 over negative 1. It's 1. Try it. Tangent of 5 pi over 4. It's 1. Sine of it, opposite over hypotenuse. Negative 1 over root 2. Remember me saying to not freak out when they said root 2 over 2? Because it's the same thing, it's just been rationalized. Whew, man, some serious stuff. So when this is all over with, what are you supposed to be able to do? First of all, don't freak out. You don't have to know everything yet. This is day one of circle trig. It is an important unit, but you don't have to know it all today. But let me just make sure you get, here's a typical question. What is the sine of 11 pi over 6? We'll do it right on this drawing because, yeah, it'll help. If you can tell me what the sine of 11 pi over 6 is, and you could have drawn it in your head, like you could have drawn it with no sine, nah, what's this called again? No unit circle. If you didn't have the unit circle given to you, could you still draw me that triangle? I bet you could have. A lot of you would have known where 11 pi over 6 was. You could have gone, oh, it's a 30, 60, 90. So it's a 1, 2, square root of 3. Oh, one of them is negative. And others of you are just going to memorize this and go, oh, it's negative a half. The answer is negative 1 half. I would have done it by doing sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Here's the opposite. Here's the hypotenuse. By one, by the way, one more rule. Hypotenuses are never negative because they are the radius of a circle, and how could the radius of a circle be negative? All right. Now, I saw a hand go up earlier. That was my question, is if hypotenuses are always positive. Okay. I finally got around to it. Hypotenuses are always positive. Okay. I'm telling you. Seriously, that was like repeatable uh, sayings that you're going to hear for the rest of the unit. What's the most common mistake in circle trig? Negatives. 
Uh, sine is y, cosine is x. All of these are like huge. You're going to hear them over and over and over and over. So seriously, memorize as much of this as you can because it's the base for everything we do from now to the end of the year. So is there homework? Yep. As usual, there's problems. Here is an example. Find the cosine of zero? What? How am I supposed to do that? Remember me saying you're going to draw a million of these? Okay, so then you think to yourself, how am I supposed to find sine of zero? Oh, zero is here. So I guess I could, oh yeah, that's right, this kind, the kinds that are on the edges of the circle, you have to like have a point for it. And this is at one comma zero. Now I have to use that whole thing that sine of the angle is y and cosine of the angle is x. And so if they want the sine of zero, it's the y of it, which is zero. What's cosine of it? It's the x of it, which is one. There's my first two answers. I had to start with a weird one. That's one thing that's annoying about this book. I know it doesn't seem like a book, but you know, we're taking this right out of a open source book, which you can do this with, but they often start with a weird one. I wish they'd start with a normal one. Maybe their theory was the teacher is helping the kids with the first one anyways. So, all right, number two. Number two is different, pi over four. Draw where you think pi over four is. I like to call it one pi over four, because that reminds me that there'd be a two pi over three, three pi over four, and four pi over four. Oh yeah, this is where one pi over four is. And so it's gonna make a 45, 45, 90. And so then it's a one, one root two. And if I want sine of pi over four, it's the same as sine of 45, Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, one over root two. I would totally have accepted one over root two. I would have also totally accepted root two over two. Because if you multiply this by root two and root two, that's what you'd get. You guys, I hope you've heard me say, what you're learning here is so important. Like I can just see, I know all the questions that are coming up on your next test. And this unit test all of a sudden becomes the base of the next three tests we take. Because we keep referring back to this stuff. So if it didn't come today, make sure that you take the review and things necessary. I would imagine it would be a little bit like a basketball coach. And they, te and they tell you, hey kids, we're learning how to shoot a jump shot today. I'm like, oh my gosh, if you can't do that, how on earth are you gonna play basketball? If you don't know the first day, do you quit? No, but you better learn how to shoot a jumper. Because otherwise, how are you gonna play basketball? I guess you could just pass the ball. All right, so, I'm done with the video for today. Hope this was useful.